Thank you so much, Ty, for joining me here on Kicking It with Christina. How are you doing today? I'm great. Great off day. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Now, a few hours ago, the Dallas Wings organization gave us an update on Isabel and Mariah, um, saying that they would miss the remainder of the season due to injuries. Can you give us a little bit of insight on that and what the team has been talking about over the last few hours? Yeah, uh, well, we knew about Mariah not being able to play, but we didn't know so much about Izzy. It was kind of like a day-to-day -day update from her. Uh, I mean, it's sad to hear that Izzy has gone down for the rest of the season, but I mean, just from here on, we're going to play for her. Uh, after she was, after she went down, uh, we huddled up and talked about it and just prayed over her. And um, I mean, trying to keep moving and just kind of just play through them and for them. Now, before we get into your rookie season and what it's been like for you, I wanted to um, go back and kind of get a little bit of your experience at South Carolina playing under someone like Don Staley. What was that experience like, like over those four years for you? Yeah, uh, like I said before, just everything wasn't glitter and gold. I mean, we're human, so we have our little growing pains in the middle of the season, but we sat down and had like a real heart to heart, let it out, everything on the table, uh, talk, and that, that kind of like grew our relationship to where it is now. I mean, I can call her for anything, and that's one of the reasons why I went to South Carolina because she's done everything that I want to do as a point guard. She, she has a lot of connections. She knows about the game, the league. She's just like the inside person that I can always talk to if I ever need help. But uh, the organization is great. I mean, the fans are amazing. Uh, they support us <laughs> through thick and thin. Whenever we need our back, whenever we need anything, they're right there for us on Twitter, in the, fan, in the stands, anything. So it's, it was amazing four years of my life. Now, at South Carolina, I mean, you've accomplished many things. Um, you won a national championship in your, uh, your freshman year. Uh, mm -hmm. You won the 2020 Don Staley Award. You finished leading in assists. Out of all of those accomplishments, what, what, which one was like meant the most to you? And what do you attribute all of that success to? I would honestly have to say um, either winning the national championship, because I mean, honestly, I mean, that's not an individual award, but that's a team award, like accomplishment, because one, people go four to five years, six years trying to get that one thing. Mm -hmm. And may not never get it. I got it my freshman year, so that was amazing. And possibly could have got it my senior year, but we gonna leave that one out. <laughs> um, <laughs> that one. <laughs> but no, honestly, I would probably have to say uh, this Don Staley Award, just because, like I said, um, she was an amazing player, decorated, highly decorated player. Um, everything that she's done, I want to do. And I mean, it's kind of good, just kind of get a word to say, like I'm on track. It's just hopefully getting to where she was. <laughs> now, you mentioned uh, that you would have possibly won in your senior year. Obviously, <laughs> you guys finished number one, ranked number one, and really the fan favorite to win. Now, I want to dive into that because there's a debate. <laughs> there's always a yeah. debate about who would have won, who should have won. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> of course, I'm going to ride with Gamecocks. I mean, of course, I'm going to ride with my team. I mean, honestly... Whoever you're talking to, it could have been from Louisville, Baylor, they're going to say they might have for their team. Like, who's going to be like, nah, it's going to be the other <laughs> team. But <laughs> um, I think just this year has been amazing. It's one of my favorite years. I mean, even though we didn't finish the year off, I didn't win the National Championship that year. It was just the relationship that I had in that year that just made it my, like, the best year like, of my college career. Just because, one, I was the mama of the team, yeah. the big sister of the team. I was the oldest on the team. Uh, I mean, I taught them. I left my legacy, and I mean, a lot of people didn't really, really didn't believe in us because, like, we were so young, and it was just me and Key returning for the uh, seniors, like, part of a group. So, like, we accomplished a lot, had a lot of adversity, and we overcame that, and we were number one for a long time. And I don't even think when we won national championship, we were ranked number one. So, like, I mean, that was a great accomplishment to have. So, it was, it was amazing. It was an amazing feeling. I know, and Coach Staley is like, you guys should just call us the national champs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about the legacy that you left at South Carolina. Um, can you give us, just dive into that a little bit more for me. What was the legacy you feel like you left at South Carolina? Yeah, so, I mean, ever since my freshman year, uh, Coach Boyer has been in my ear telling me how I need to be a leader, step up. Even though I'm a freshman, I have to be that leader because I'm going to be the point guard and eventually I was the starting point guard so I had to just be that person to lead and then as like 
years went on, um, I got to learn a lot from Asia. Like, she definitely left her legacy at South Carolina. Oh, yeah. And um, once she's, like, once she left, it was kind of like the reins was all on me. Like, because we were, my sophomore year, her last year, we were co-captains. And so she would have left and it would have been just me. So it was kind of like, here's the keys to the car. So I like, now it's your turn to kind of like leave your legacy, leave your blueprint, your imprint on them. So um, for me, mostly it was kind of just being that person that anybody can lean on towards, like the young ones, especially because I was the older one, like whatever they needed, I'll be there. Cause like, I didn't have that, I didn't have many classes. So like, if they needed to write to class, if they needed to go to study hall, like they'll call me, like, keep me up for class, keep come do this, that, and the third. It could have been in my nap time, but I still got up because, like, I was once them, <laughs> and I know how it feels. So just lean on me. Uh, they could trust me. I knew all the plays. I knew everything that how Don wanted and how it needed to be ran. So kind of just that person that uh, they could always depend on in hard times or even when they just need a pick-me-up or anything like that. Just kind of just chill with the person. So, yeah. Now I want to pivot a little bit and talk about – your rookie season, your WNBA career, first and foremost, um, go back to that night on draft night. What was it like to hear your name called on draft night? It was so surreal. Uh, it was so, like, it's crazy because, like, you would think Corona would have changed everything, but, like, despite the world being shut down, despite the pandemic, despite us not being in New York, actually going through it, the WNBA made it so, like, like, we were still kind of there by the virtual live thing and, like, us dressing up and sending pictures and stuff that I actually felt like I was still waiting at the tables to get my name called and going up there and get my hat and stuff like that because they also sent us a kit where all the hats were, right? So, like, whatever whatever team called, you kind of pick up your hat and put it on. But um, it was it was so real. I mean, it was a lifelong dream of mine. I dreamt of it since I was a little girl. I mean, every – sacrifice every late night every early mornings was to get to this point and to finally see like everything paid off is just like a big like weight lift off your shoulder especially my senior because I was just, like one foot in one foot out like <laughs> what place am I gonna go like I'm looking at the mock draft after every game like <laughs> where they have me at so it was it was really nice weight lift off my shoulder and it was really just a great feeling to have and I'm just totally blessed to be here you just mentioned the mock craft and how you with it. I mean, they had you going pretty, pretty low. In the yeah. To see how everything played out. What was, was that motivation for you in your senior year, just knowing that people had you, like, underrated? They didn't really think that you would go so high? Yeah, so I, I want to say I want to take it back all the way to summer going into my senior year. I was with the USA team, and we was in Peru. And we had, like, a younger group with us, too. So, like, it was 22 or over, but we had, like, two years and a year younger than me playing with us. And so they're looking at the mock draft one night. <laughs> and we're looking, looking. One of them didn't have me on there. Another one had me last, second to last pick, third round, all that. So I'm just like, dang, like, this is how people really feel. So, like, that fueled my fire from there on. I was like, I'm changing my mindset. Like, I'm going in and kill. So then we get to the season. We start talking about stuff. We start – seeing how things playing out, um, that's when stuff got a little rocky because, like, like I said, I was one foot in, one foot out. So it was kind of like I was here. But then again, I'm, like, thinking about, like, I got to get mine so I can rise to dress up. But for that, like, every team's different. So, like, they didn't need me just to go get mine every night. Like, we had great freshmen. We had great sophomore juniors. So, like, I kind of had to, like, play around with it and see how it is. And so um, – my coach, assistant coach, Coach Boyer, she was always in my ear, like, Ty, don't even worry about it. Like, you're good. Like, I'm telling you, like, the WNBA coaches are talking to me, saying they love you, you're good. And it wasn't so much of her just saying that just so, like, it can hype my head up or make my head bend. It was more taking the pressure off of me so I can just relax and actually be in a moment of my senior year because after this year, there's no more college. So, like, just really enjoy your last year here while you're here and let, like, the future take care of itself. So, um, it was it was bittersweet. But towards the end, once I, like, got on my own head, it was like, man, forget the mock draft. It could have been anybody who's making that stuff. Like, they don't really know what's going to happen. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think everybody who was in my support, like, circle, just to kind of keep my head level and straight on for that because if not, I would have been all over the place. You also received very high praise early on before the draft from Skylar Diggins-Smith. Mm. Um, what, what was that like to get such high praise from someone like a veteran like her? 
Yeah, um, it was amazing. I'm, I kind of knew Skyler when I was younger. Uh, we're kind of from the same area, South Bend. My dad's from there, that side, like his family. So I'm always up there all the time. So we kind of knew each other when we were younger, but it was just great just to have her, you know, say my name in that little uh, interview, just just to put my name out there, just so people know, like, oh, I like after I heard that, I was like, oh, people actually like watch my games. Like people know me. Like it's not just like, oh, she's third round. Like nobody knows it, like type thing. But yeah, it was nice. It was kind of like a, a bright spot in my my day when I heard, seen that and heard that. Now, I want to talk about your transition from college into the WBA. What is that? What has this experience been like? Um, obviously, this season is different than what other seasons has been like in the mm-hmm. WBA, guys being in a bubble. So, how have you been able to adjust to life in the bubble? Yeah, so um, I want to say, honestly, this might be the easiest transition for the rookies because for me personally, it feels like I'm back in college. Like, <laughs> it's I'm in the room, I go to the gym, and it's just back and forth in the game time, basically. Like in college, I was in see my senior year, I was in the room, gym, didn't have school, didn't have study hall, so like, like it was literally just going back and forth. So like um it wasn't that big of an adjustment. Like I stayed in a hotel. Um some of my teammates stay in like lodges of villas, so like I go over there if I want to go eat or something like that or just hang out. But hotel is definitely my spot. I like my own space, kinda like <laughs> stay to myself type thing I, like if I'm mad I'm gonna just leave all y'all out I'm just coop up in here type thing but um it was pretty easy just because um we didn't we didn't have training camp so like a lot of people like we kind of just had to learn on the fly and I think that's a, like a big thing for me is like I get it like basketball size like like the IQ stuff that that comes easy to me like plays all that stuff come easy to me so like I wasn't struggling with that at all and I praise God for that because I know a lot of people struggle with that and, and how fast we had to adjust to things but um yeah it was an easy transition I mean I really like seeing everybody I like not having to travel every day I know they told me about the commercial flights and especially come from South Carolina we had charter flights so like that would have been that <laughs> I sound a little bougie but that would have been a big difference going through the commercials going through all that and from like charter flights so <laughs> kind of happy about that how everything is just like right here in this central we just wake up go downstairs get tested ride our bikes to practice and then get on the bus to go to the game so yeah it's nice now uh, the game pass presence is heavy in the WNBA asia to mitchell you um, yeah the other so have you run into any former game pass and if so what advice have they given you really to uh, welcome you into the WNBA? Uh, I have, I ran into Tiff a couple times on a golf cart. I see her all the time. Asia, she stays in a hotel. Does she stay in a hotel? I don't know. No, she stays in lodge, but I see her all the time when she come get food and stuff like that. Yeah. Leash, obviously, we, we see each other every day. <laughs> we just played late a couple, like, days ago. So, like, it's like every turn is like, oh, hey, y'all, like, we run into each other. But I want to say they actually gave me the most advice before I got into the league. Like, not now, uh, but, like, before everything go, was going down, like senior year, uh, during the draft night and stuff like that, they was telling me like, you you honestly can compete with these girls. Like don't everything like you can't, don't have a doubt in your mind that you can't. I mean, the SEC prepared us really well, especially for guards. Cause like the SEC was like fast paced, quick guards type things. And that's how the guards are here in the league. So they was like, SEC sets you up really well. Um, just kind of just play your game and have fun with it really. Um. What is it like coming off as the second part of the second unit with the Dallas Wings? I know you've had to adjust many different times, mm-hmm. injuries and things like that. As someone mm-hmm. who started most of her college career and then you come onto a team, how has your role changed now, um, now that you're in the pros? Yeah, I've never been a type to like always be big on coming off the bench or starting, honestly. Uh, I kind of just go about life with just optimizing every opportunity that I get. It could be one minute, two minute, five minute, fifteen minutes. Uh, kind of just just going in there and having a purpose every time your number is called. Uh, I mean, yeah, I did. I when I first got to South Carolina, I wasn't starting, so I was coming off the bench. And it wasn't until December, so like midway through the season, where she decided to start me. Uh, was when I got into the starting lineup. So like, I was never too big. I was like, oh, I have to start. Like, this is like a thing that I have to do. No, like, I know there's going to be growing pains. There's going to be a transition from the speed, physicality, learning Brian, learning his system, playing with new players and stuff like that. So, like, I knew that was going to be in there. And honestly, it's just – it's all God's timing. Like, whenever his time is, 
for me to step up and be the starting point guard, I'm right here with it, waiting for my opportunity. So it, I'm I'm okay with it. I, I like coming off the bench, especially just kind of just watching and see how things is going at first, and then kind of just maintaining or trying to push up or trying to gain that advantage when I come in and do have the opportunity to play. Now we're way more than halfway through the season, um, and you played a lot. Uh, what was some of your toughest matchups so far? <laughs> yeah, um, Skylar Diggins. Really? She was tough because uh, <laughs> she was tough defending because Brian's very big on defense. And 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 the, what I noticed in the league is there's a lot of pick and roll. Yep. And if you yep. don't get through the pick and roll, it's kind of like, all right, next man up, who can get through this pick and roll? Because we have to stop the point of attack. And Skylar uses that screen so well. Like, I mean, like, there's not even a sliver to get through that screen. So that I would say that was tough, just defending her off of pick and rolls. Um, Sue Bird, of course, just her knowledge, how she just knew where Stewie and everybody was going to be. Um, we just played L.A., so Chelsea Gray, tough. Yep. The, <laughs> the back to the basket game, the being able to score, even if you're, you have a hand in your face, you think you can play great D and she still make the bucket. That's tough. I mean, it, a lot of people, it's just a lot of people that you really don't notice. Like, you wouldn't think, like, oh, they're super nice. But, like, everybody in the league is super nice. It's just, like, they got to find their role and, er, like, how they how they do well in that kind of thing. So, like, everybody's really nice, really. <laughs> I was listening to one of your previous interviews, and you actually said that you try to model some of your game from Sue, Sue Burst. Uh, <laughs> and you said that she's, like, one of your toughest matchups. What parts yeah. do you try to model? Um, from Sue? <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, from my college career, a lot of people say I'm a true point guard, and I, I have no problems with being that. Uh, I like being a facilitator. I like setting up my teammates. I know when to go get a bucket if needed to be, uh, run the floor, run the show type thing. So, I mean, I think Sue is a true, true, true example of that. I mean, sets up her team. She knows she's not – oppressed about going to go score 30, 40, like, when it's her turn, she'll step up and get a bucket if she needs to be. Until then, she's setting up everybody, and she just knows the game so well. So that's what, what I really like about her, that she's a true point guard and not just scoring, 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 scoring. And this season, it was announced that you signed to Under Armour. What does it mean to you to, uh, to be signed to a brand like Under Armour? It means the world. I mean, especially during the pandemic. I mean, you think everything will be on hold. Everything will be on, like, lock and stuff like that. And just to have Under Armour to reach out to me and uh, want me to be the face, one of the faces of, like, the, the WNBA uh, woman's side of Under Armour is amazing because, I mean, this is their first year where they really are reaching out to be in the league for women basketball. And it's really me, my teammate, and uh, – another girl, another rookie that are the faces and we're kind of like the front runner. We can say we, we can call ourselves Steph Curry's of the women's side, basically. <laughs> so it's kind of just neat just to have like a Dorsum deal, just have something to fall back on. Like I don't have to go buy shoes. Like I can just call up the rep and be like, Hey, can I have a pair of shoes? And they ship it to me. So it's, it's really nice just to represent them and um, everything that they mean to the community and stuff like that. And kind of just show women that Under Armour is, is a good fit to rock in, you know? <laughs> Right now, you're wearing a Say Her Name t-shirt, and the WNBA has dedicated the 2020 season to social justice initiatives and the support of Black Lives Matter. What does it mean to you as a player to have the league back the players and their initiatives in that way? Um, it means the world. I mean, honestly, I think just the whole having the platform to speak out and just to say how you feel about things is neat, and just to have your organization that you're playing for uh, to have your back as well. So. They, it just shows, like, how much they care about us, like, the things they're willing to do for us just to put it out there in the world. And, I mean, it's amazing just how we, uh, you know, recognize different people each game, Kobe, Sandra Bland, all of them. Just, like, I actually customized a lot of shoes. Like, Under Armour customized these shoes for me. Okay. It kind of okay. just, like, um, different stuff with the fist. Um, one guy customized these for me, like, and it's pretty cool just to have customized shoes to kind of rock. So <laughs> it's just neat just to have a platform just to speak out and um, just know that they have our back, whatever, whatever you want to kind of just have out there in the world. Now, one of the things that I got to see up close in person in the off season was how hard you work in the gym. But not mm -hmm. only that, in Indiana, how you 
um, are such a leader in your own community in terms of getting young girls involved in the sport of basketball. And you mm -hmm. are also is involved in the sport of basketball. So what does that mean to you to, have, to be such a leader in your own community and for your sister to see like how basketball has impacted your life and where she can possibly go um, with basketball? Yeah, I mean, she's part of my why. Why I do this, why I play basketball, just the uh, support, just to be that role model. I mean, everything you do, I think life has a purpose. It's just not just playing basketball, playing, uh, dribbling the ball. It's, I feel like there's a deeper meaning to everything just to show, like, young girls can make it to this level and can speak about things. And it may be uncomfortable, but see change in the things that we were speaking out about. So just to be a role model just to people, I mean, I kind of got lucky having younger sisters who, and a sister who plays basketball, so it kind of comes easy to me because I already know she's already looking up and trying to mimic everything that I do. So just being a role model just to her, her teammates, um, anybody just in my community in Indiana, really just to show them, like, you can make it out. You can do whatever you set your mind to. And um, just with, like, perseverance and just with just the mindset that you're going to work, 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 no matter what, you, you, you can accomplish your dreams, your goals. And we're going to end it on this. Um, now, for the rest of the season, what are some of your personal goals in terms mm -hmm. of what you want to work on or the statement that you want to make in your rookie season? Yeah, um, honestly, just that person, uh, a person that's not so persuaded off of any outside thing, any things that you can't control. Uh, I want to be a person who's known that I control the controllables and I'm a person that is a very opportunist. Whenever her opportunity is called, whenever her number is called, she's going to produce. And um, that's kind of just being being that right now, just kind of just maintaining and being consistent of just whenever my number is called, producing on the floor and kind of just working my way to where Brian can trust me and I can just grow more and more with that program. Well, thank you so much, Ty, for kicking in with me today. It's been such a pleasure to chat with you, to get to know a little bit more about you and your goals for this season. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.